Another way to optimize different experimental conditions or parameters is to use a factorial design. A factorial design refers to the ability to measure multiple conditions for each one of the cases and then decide from this grid of measurements what are the best conditions. So today we are going to decide, uh, we are going to discuss factorial designs, a, spe a specialized form called 2 to the k designs, and give an example of 2 to the k designs which is highly applicable to experiment 3, the experiment on voltammetry. Let's begin then by giving an example of what a factor factorial design might look like. And again, factorial design, as we said, refers to a grid of measurements. One example is when we have four subjects, one, two, three, four, that are given different formulations, A, B, and C, and D, on four different days, periods one, two, three, and four, to determine if the formulations have an effect pharmaceutical effect or are bioequivalent on, on the individuals. And again, we have then four subjects, four formulations, four days. And if we would like to do this measurement, we'll require a lot of measurements. Another example of factorial design is when we have three different techniques, reverse phase HPLC, GC, and micellar electrokinetic capillary chromatography, combined with four different extraction methods. And the idea is that we would like to use that to analyze the amounts of three, of three compounds, stradiol, testosterone, and cholesterol. Again, to find the optimal condition, we will have to do multiple measurements for each technique with the different extraction procedures for each of the analytes. So in practice, uh, this might be time consuming and expensive. So there should be a different way to do that. So let's look at one of the examples of how we can actually do a factorial design. This is what we call a Latin square. A Latin square refers to the combination of the multiple factors that need to be measured. So here we have a situation in which we are going to have the subjects, the periods, and the different formulations A, B, C, and the being administered. And the idea of a factorial design or a predefined table is that none of the conditions are repeated with respect to each other. In this course, we will not be using a, a Latin square. As we can see, we have to do at least 16 measurements in this particular situation. And then find out how to extract uh, the information, whether the change is significant. This is usually expensive and time consuming. There are modified approaches that allows us to use an experimental design without having to conduct that many measurements. So one of these, exam one of these approaches is called the two to the K designs. And it's particularly useful when we are comparing only two states of a given parameter. For instance, imagine that these two states represent uh, one of them could be pH, the other one could be absorbance, the other one could be temperature, the other one could be um, solubility. And we have, for each of these parameters, we have a code representing the highest value and the lowest value. Some people represent that as plus one, minus one, or one or zero, or plus and minus. And the idea is that using a predefined experimental design, we can use any experiment that meets this requirement to be calculated and analyzed by the two to the K design. So here's an example in which we are going to, uh, to compare K factors at two levels, and each of the factors will be represented or coded by x1, x2, or x3. So here we have a 2 to the 3 design. Perhaps that's not very clear there, so I'm just going to put it on the, on the margin here, 2 to the 3rd design. And what we can see there is that in this particular table, we are coding the levels as 
minus 1 or plus 1. So if we have three factors, let's focus on the first measurement or experiment. This has all the factors at the lowest level of minus 1. And we also have here a response of that measurement represented as y1. Now we have here a second experiment in which the factor is at the high level, the second factor is at the low level, and the third factor is at the low level. We do the measurement using these levels and we get a different response. So in this 2 to the third design, we have all together eight experiments in which we are combining different forms and permutations of high and low levels and doing the corresponding measurements. So now let's see how this could be applied to a specific experiment. So here is a determination of a very important component in, in plasma, serioplasmin, and it's based on a reporter chemical paraphenylenadiamine, or PPD. And the assay is based on monitoring the rate of oxidation. So in this particular situation then, what we would like to understand is that how different experimental parameters affect that rate of oxidation. So here we have, again, two to the third design because we are going to investigate the effect of three factors, the pH, the temperature, and the concentration of PPD. And since it is a two to the, to the third design, because we have three factors, we need to have a low level and a high level. Temperature would be 35 as low, 40 as high. PPD concentration is going to be 0.5 millimolar as low, 27.3 as high. And pH is going to be 4.8 as low and 6.4 as high. So what we will do then is that we will use these low and high levels of each of the factors and use the table that we saw before as a guide to conduct the multiple measurements. So we then use that table, and here we have the same representation that we saw before. But now we have replaced X1, X2, and X3 by temperature, PPD, and pH, respectively. And we have conducted the measurements at the corresponding levels, and we obtain a rate of oxidation, which is really a rate of change of absorbance or absorbance change per minute. So what we do then is that we are we take the measurements for each of the conditions, the eight experiments predefined by the table. Something that is new in this particular table is what we call interaction effects. Interaction effects will consider the possibility that some of the factors such as temperature and concentration of PPD or temperature and pH or PPD concentration and pH may have an effect on the outcome of the experiment in, in, and bias the optimization. So when we do an experimental design of 2 to the K, we will need to consider these interaction effects as well. And what we have here to determine, uh, to, compl to complete this table, we are going to do very simple math. If we have temperature and PPD, we will take the value of the temperature and PPD and multiply them. So plus 1 minus 1 equals minus 1. And we can continue filling up the table for each of the different interactions that we have here. So now, how do we determine if these factors are relevant to the method or the measurement? What we need to do is 
define some statistical parameters. The key parameter here is what we call the absolute value of d. And d is going to have the sum of all the outputs when, the fact, when each of the factors is high, or plus 1, divided by the number of measurements that, that had that factor as high, minus all the outputs when the level of the factor was low, divided by the number of factors that had that low level. So if we look back at the table, what we can see is, and we will return to the table, what we can see is that the first measurement, the, the, the ones that have all, high, say, if we are basically looking at temperature, so we are looking at this particular column here. The ones that have the factor as high will be the first measurement, the second, the third, and the fourth. And loth will be five, six, seven, and eight. So this is what we have here. We say basically say that the measurements that are high are the ones that we need to consider. So we now look at the readings corresponding to those four factors, which are basically y through y1 through y4 divided by the number of factors that we have high, and then subtract those that are low, y5 through y8 divided by 4. When we do the math, we calculate this value, the difference of t, which has a value of 0.53. In order to complete statistical analysis, we also need to do replicate measurements in which all the factors were considered to be high. We need to have at least four of these replicate measurements, and we need to calculate the standard deviation of these factors. So let's see how this information is going to be used to determine significance. So the key comparison here will be the difference that we calculate is going to be compared against the product of the standard deviation times a t value determined from a table of statistical comparisons. Notice that we have a p value of 0 0.05, 0 0.95, and we also have the degrees of freedom represented as df. And if we have n equals 4, the degrees of freedom would be or minus 1, which is equal to 3. We find the values in the table, and then we can do the co these comparisons. If this inequality is observed, we will say that there is a significant effect by that factor. So as an example, let's look at the temperature. Low level was 35, high level was 40. The value of dt for the temperature is 0.53, and the units were minus to the minus 1. If we do an experiment of all high values four times, experimentally for this particular example, the standard deviation is 3.18 minus to the minus 1. We calculate the product of the standard deviation times the t value, and that gives 0.76 minus to the minus 1. If we compare now the d value with this product, we see that inequality is pointing that d is going to be less than the product of the standard deviation and the t value. So therefore, we can say that temperature doesn't have an effect in the ratio of 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. So that means that one can potentially do the experiment without being too careful about whether we use 37 or we use 38 degrees Celsius. One degree will not make a difference as long as it's within this range. Similarly, we can basically look at the other factors. For instance, we can look at the factor for PP, uh, PPD concentration and pH. We calculate, in, by the same fashion, the d value, and then we can do the same comparison. 
And because the product of the standard deviation and the t value is, are constant, we just need to compare the, the corresponding difference with the value that we obtained before. And we can see that in this particular case, the LD uh, of PPD is higher than 0.76, so there's a significant effect. So we have to be careful with the concentration of PPD. For pH, the DPH, which was 2.7, is greater than 0.76. pH is also an important factor to consider. One can graphically represent these values. So this represents all the low values, and this represents all the high values. And we can see that for PPP Devon, PPP, PPD levels, there's a significant effect. This is usually just a visual representation if you would like to include your data in a graph or in a particular report. Now, the last factor to consider is the interaction effects. And what we need to consider here is that we need to, to determine if indeed there are some interactions happening. What we will do then is that we will do the same type of determination. We will try to determine a d value for each and one of the interactions that we have here and apply the same statistical comparison. So we have then for the interaction of temperature and PPD, this is the d value. For the interaction of PPD and pH, we have this is the d value. And if we now compare the differences of outputs, we see that the interaction of temperature and PPD is less than 0.76. That means that there is an interaction between the temperature and PPA, uh, that, the, that there is no interaction between the temperature and PPD. On the other hand, if we compare now the value for PPD and pH, we can basically see that this is greater than 0.76. There is an interaction between the pH and PPD. So in other words, when we are optimizing these conditions, we will need to be careful about selecting the parameters so that we basically minimize this potential interference. So in summary, we can use a 2 to the k table, such as the one that we have here, 2 to the third table, to investigate multiple parameters and determine which ones of these parameters are relevant to the optimization that we are trying to pursue.